Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, we'll be discussing insulation. And there are going to be two parts to our insulation discussion. This episode, part one, will cover the various insulation materials that are used in the building industry. And part two will cover the different types of insulation applications that use these materials. Insulation materials include fibrous materials such as fiberglass, mineral wool, cellulose, and natural fibers. Other materials include various types of foams and thermoplastics, autoclaved concretes, and reflective facings. All of these materials help to mitigate heat transfer through the building envelope, whether by reducing conduction, convection, radiation, or more likely some combination of the three. First, we'll start with fiberglass. Fiberglass consists of extremely fine glass fibers and is one of the most common insulation materials on the market. Fiberglass insulation is made from molten glass that is spun or blown into fibers. Most manufacturers use 40 to 60% recycled glass content in their fiberglass insulation. The next material on our list is mineral wool. The term mineral wool typically refers to two types of insulation materials. Rock wool, which is a man-made material consisting of natural minerals like basalt or diabase, and slag wool, a man-made material made from, made from blast furnace slag. That's the waste matter that forms on the surface of molten metal. Mineral wool contains an average of 75% post-industrial recycled content. It doesn't require additional chemicals to make it fire resistant, and it is commonly available as blanket and loose fill insulation. Cellulose insulation is made from recycled paper products, primarily newsprint, and it has a very high recycled content, generally 82 to 85 percent. The paper is first reduced to small pieces and then fiberized, creating a product that packs tightly into building cavities and inhibits airflow. Manufacturers add the mineral borate, sometimes blended with the less costly ammonium sulfate to ensure fire and insect resistance. Cellulose insulation typically requires no moisture barrier and when installed at the proper densities, cannot settle in a building cavity. Some natural fibers, including cotton, sheep's wool, straw, and hemp, are also used as insulation materials. Cotton insulation consists of 85% recycled cotton and 15% plastic fibers that have been treated with borate. The same fire retardant and insect rodent repellent used in cellulose insulation. One product uses recycled blue jane manufacturing trim waste. As a result of its recycled content, this product uses minimal energy to manufacture. For use as insulation, sheep's wool is also treated with borate to resist pests, fire, and mold. It can hold large quantities of water which is an advantage for use in some walls, but repeated wetting and drying can leach out the borate. Sheep's wool's bats for a two by four wall and two by six wall offer an R13 and R19 value respectively. Straw bale construction popular 150 years ago on the Great Plains of the United States has received renewed interest as a renewable building material. Some builders will build the building with straw bales. These straw bales provide an excellent thermal and air barrier, often achieving R values in excess of R25 for walls. The interior and exterior surfaces are finished with stucco. While this is certainly not conventional in today's standards, it provides a good, inexpensive building envelope. More conventional, straw can be fused together into boards without adhesives. This technology was developed in the 1930s, resulting in panels that are usually two to four inches thick and faced with heavyweight craft paper on each side. The boards also make effective sound absorbing panels for interior partitions. 
Polystyrene is a colorless transparent thermoplastic. It is commonly used to make foam board or beadboard insulation, concrete block insulation, and a type of loose fill insulation consisting of small beads of polystyrene. Molded expanded polystyrene, or MEPS, is commonly used for foam board insulation and is also available as small foam beads. These beads can be used as a pouring insulation for concrete blocks or other hollow wall cavities. Other polystyrene insulation materials similar to MEPS are expanded polystyrenes, EPSs, and extruded polystyrene, or XPSs. EPS and XPS are both made from polystyrene, but EPS is composed of small plastic beads that are fused together, and XPS begins as a molten material that is pressed out to form into sheets. Most often, XPS is sold in rigid boards. Over time, the R value of XPS insulation can drop as some of the low conductivity gas escapes and air replaces it, a phenomenon that is known as thermal drift or aging. The thermal resistance or R value of polystyrene boards depends on its density. Polystyrene loose fill or bead insulation typically has a lower R value compared to the foam board. Polyisocyanurate or polyiso is another type of thermoplastic closed cell foam that contains a low conductivity hydrofluorocarbon free gas in its cells. Polyisocyanurate insulation is available as a liquid, a spray foam, and also as rigid foam boards. It can also be made into laminated insulation panels for a variety of facings. Foam in placed applications of polyisocyanurate insulation are usually cheaper than installing foam boards and perform better because the liquid foam molds itself to all of the surfaces. Over time, polyisocyanurate insulation can experience thermal drift as some of the low conductivity gas escapes and air replaces it, causing the R value to decrease. Experimental data indicates that most thermal drift occurs during the first two years after the insulation material is manufactured. Polyurethane is a foam insulation material that contains a low conductivity gas in its cells Polyurethane foam insulation is available in closed cell and open cell formulas. With closed cell foam, the high density cells are closed and filled with a gas that helps the foam expand to fill the spaces around it. Open cell foam cells are not as dense and are filled with air, which gives the insulation a spongy texture and a lower R value. The type of foam insulation you should choose depends on how you will use it and on your budget. While closed cell foam has a greater R value and provides stronger resistance against moisture and air leakage, the material is also much denser and more expensive to install. Open cell foam is lighter and less expensive, but should not be used below ground level where it could absorb water. Like polyiso foam, the R value and closed cell polyurethane insulation can drop as thermal drift occurs. Most thermal drift occurs within the first two years after the insulation material is manufactured, after which the R value remains unchanged unless the foam is damaged. Today, most foam materials use foaming agents that don't use chlorofluorocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons, which are harmful to the Earth's ozone layer. Low density open cell polyurethane foams use air as a blowing agent and have an R value that doesn't change over time. These foams are similar to conventional polyurethane foams, but are more flexible. Some low density varieties use carbon dioxide as the foaming agent. Low density foams are sprayed into open wall cavities and rapidly expand to seal and fill the cavity. Slow expanding foam is also available, which is intended for cavities in existing homes. The liquid foam expands very slowly, reducing the chance of damaging the wall from overexpansion. The foam is water vapor permeable, 
remains flexible, and is resistant to wicking of moisture. It provides good air sealing and is fire resistant and won't sustain a flame. Soy-based polyurethane liquid spray foam products are also available. These products can be applied with the same equipment used for petroleum-based polyurethane foam products. Cementitious insulation material is a cement-based foam used as spray foam or foamed-in-place insulation. One type of cementitious spray foam insulation contains magnesium silicate and has an initial consistency similar to shaving cream. Cementitious foam costs about as much as polyurethane foam and is made from materials such as magnesium oxide, which can be extracted from seawater. In the United States, two varieties of solid precast autoclaved concrete masonry are now available. Autoclaved aerated concrete, or AAC, and autoclaved cellular concrete, ACC. This material contains about 80% air by volume and has been commonly used in Europe since the late 1940s. Autoclave concrete has 10 times the insulating value of conventional concrete. The blocks are large, light, and easily sawed, nailed, and shaped with ordinary tools. The material absorbs water readily, so it requires protection from moisture. Precast ACC uses fly ash from coal-fired power plants instead of high silica sand, which distinguishes it from AAC. Facings are fastened to insulation materials during the manufacturing process. A facing protects the insulation surface, holds the insulation together, and facilitates fastening to building components. Some types of facing can also act as an air barrier, radiant barrier, and or vapor barrier, and some even provide flame resistance. Common facing materials include craft paper, white vinyl sheeting, and aluminum foil. All of these materials act as a vapor barrier and an air barrier. Aluminum foil can also act as a radiant barrier. Your climate and where and how you're installing the insulation in your building will determine what type of facing and or barrier, if any, is needed. Some of the same materials used as insulation facings can be installed separately to provide an air barrier, vapor barrier, and or radiant barrier. And so to conclude this episode, we introduced a number of insulation materials, including fiberglass, mineral wool, cellulose, natural fibers, as well as various types of foams and thermoplastics, concrete, and reflective facings. All of these materials help to mitigate heat transfer through the building envelope, whether by reducing conduction, convection radiation, or a combination of all three. Now that you have some familiarity with these materials, We'll move on to part two of our insulation lesson and talk about different applications of these materials and how they're used in various types of insulation that are used in buildings.